Hello everyone, Rick Bronze here with another installment of the typical solar experience. Anyway, we're coming up on two years since we installed this 6.5 kilowatt system and things seem to be going well. They have a wonderful app that they gave me that uh, gathers all this data and as you see it's comparing one year to another. So you can see actually uh, I got rid of one of my shading trees and uh, up my solar power uh, for the next year. Anyway, but as I was sitting here pondering the, uh, the purchase, they said that this uh, solar panels would be 85% efficient, I think after 25 years, maybe it was 80%. I'm like, how would I measure something like that? You know, either the sun is you know, more bright, I had more cloudy days, I had less cloudy days. It's hard to really judge uh, what actually happened without any external data. So I'm calling on you, my uh, followers, to perhaps point me in a direction where I can get some atmospheric science data and do a comparison and see if my solar panels are really working up to snuff. Anyway, hope you all have a great day. Bye. My name is Rick. This is uh, Lucy. She gave me your name as far as somebody that uh, might have some information about uh, solar energy in my region. I have some solar panels and uh, I have this app that gets a lot of data and a lot of good stuff. And But I have nothing to compare it to, so I have no idea if my panels are performing well or not performing well You know, over the 25 years that they say they're supposed to uh, last me. So, um, well, yeah, well, hi, thank you for reaching out and, and asking, Rick. My name is Paul Stackhouse. I'm here at NASA Langley Research Center. And nice to meet you too, Lucy. And uh, sure, I'd be glad to, to help and see if we can provide some additional information. So you have a solar panel system and mm -hmm. you're interested in learning about how much of sunlight is actually uh, hitting the ground in your area. And, uh, and maybe you can use that to get some information about how your system system's performing. Yeah. Is that is that what I understand? Yeah, I'm looking for some uh, something I could call a reference uh, data set that uh, I can do my comparisons. Okay. Well, we do have solar radiance. That's what we call it, is, uh, which is the amount of sunlight that hits the ground uh, relative to a horizontal surface on the Earth. And it, we have this available via our website called Power. And I can share my screen and I can lead you through a little bit of step-by-step -step so you can at least see what the solar radiance uh, values are, the solar energy values are for your area. And you can kind of get a sense for how your system's performing relative to the amount of solar energy for each particular month. And the nice thing about these data products is if the clouds change, if you have a really clear month, then you'll get more energy, but we'll, we'll also, we'll also uh, give a larger estimate. And then if it's a real cloudy month, even unseasonably cloudy, our estimates will be reduced. So in other words, we'll be able to respond uh, according to the actual conditions that you're observing in and around your region. That so <laughs> let, me, uh, let me go ahead and share my screen so you can see the uh, the uh, website that we have. It's called Power, uh, and uh, we provide global data uh, spanning all the way back to 1983. But you just put your system in, right? Yeah, a couple of years ago. So I do have a couple of years worth of data, and I'm kind of seeing the comparison between one year and another on my. Um, on my charts, so they gave me a nice app that uh, that shows me various graphs. I don't quite have it up yet, but uh, these graphs kind of show, you know, the monthly data and things like that. So yeah, if you could bring up like something like 2020, you know, monthly averages, then uh, we could kind of see sure. if they if they line up. Sure. So what what you could do on our website is that you can come through. This is a general information about the website and where the uh, inf information that we're providing comes from and uh, but we have a couple different options for you and 
since you're a new user, we'll just start with this data access viewer. So this allows you to go in and get the, just the data that you're interested in for the times and places. So it comes up and it shows you a number of applications we have at the bottom. You can see these. So you can get point data or regional data or global data or specialized reports that we make. But for today, you just need some point data. Okay. So uh, let's use our point app, which is the default app that comes up. And I just need to get some information from you on what you're interested in in getting. So we serve three different communities, but since you're a solar power uh, user, we'll use the renewable energy community. And we have data that's actually up to hourly, um, but uh, it sounds like you mentioned monthly. So would you like to do monthly data or uh, see something a, a little bit uh, like daily or? Um, yeah, if we could do like uh, what I have a graph here is uh, the month monthly for uh, 2000. I All mean, right. 20, sorry, 2020. OK, and, um, I'm in the um, I guess my point on Earth would be around Virginia Beach. Well, um, OK, so what we'll do first is we'll pick the monthly and annual average statistics okay. and then we'll go ahead and we'll find your location. Uh, I mean, we could do the whole world. We come in here. So if I let me just show the viewers here. So we, you can do this. We have the same information available anywhere in the world, but you're in Virginia Beach, Virginia. So let me just blow up and I can locate that. If you don't, don't have your specific, we need your latitude and longitude, but if you don't have that, you can use this map to point and click your location. So here we are in Virginia Beach. I'm just going to blow it up a little more. All right. So you can see if you keep blowing up, you can actually get your street or whatever. But uh, I don't know what part of Virginia Beach. Uh, you uh, closer uh, to the ocean? Mount Trashmore, let's say. Mount Trashmore. Okay. That, that I happen to know a little bit about Virginia Beach. I think that's over here by the highway, right about here. Yeah. So I'm going to pick that. And then um, since you're only interested in 2020, we'll spam this. You can see you could go all the way back to uh, for the solar data all the way back to 1983. But yeah. we'll just go just 2020 I I... unless you want to see 2019 as well. OK, yeah, that'd be great. So, I, yeah, I wish I'd got my panels back in 83. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a number of data formats you can get. Well, I'm just going to pick the Excel uh, compatible format and then uh, we have a number of parameters that we could we could provide for your your information now it mm -hmm. sounds like what you're really interested in is what we call the all sky surface shortwave downward irradiance which is the amount of energy under all conditions so whether it's clear or cloudy um, we have an estimate of how much energy would hit that region there in virginia beach mm -hmm. and so but we have a number of other parameters you can see uh, that, that might be useful for certain applications. For instance, the cloud amount. So we could actually, uh, you could actually look at how does my irradiance change with the cloud fraction. Um, <laughs> and uh, you, if you're going to the beach, you could even use your our UV estimates here. We also have information for tilted solar panels, um, and yours are on the roof, so that should be something we could look into later. Uh -huh. um, but we just have equator uh, facing angles available right now, so uh, so I don't. We'd, we'll have to have a more general. Uh, we'll do a more general. Uh, yeah, well, we're, later. We're not really. But we do have some other. Per I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, we're not really scientists, so it's hard to interpret some of the parameters. But um, but yeah, that's a lot of information available. I wish uh, we had like kind of all that in a nice little lab that I could just uh, see what my sunshine is. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be nice. The, the website's fully, uh, you know, has all the details and all the data parameters, but it would be nice to be able to have something that would quickly get just the parameters that you might be interested in. Just to uh, complete um, some of the other parameters we have we do have meteorology estimates at the surface too so for instance the 
temperature or the dew point temperature, which gives an indication of the of the moisture available. Mm -hmm. um, we have something uh, called the uh, we have the relative humidity and estimate of the precipitation as well. You know, it sounds like that probably for this first cut, we'd probably just go with this all sky surface shortwave irradiance mm -hmm. uh, and this cloud amount okay. on a monthly average. And uh, let's see what happens when we go ahead and submit. Yeah, so maybe this, they say it's worldwide. We could actually plan our vacation uh, using this site. That would be right. great. <laughs> well, you know I'm a realtor too, and I'm showing this house next week. And next week, the day that I'm showing the house, it's going to be cloudy and rainy. And uh, the um, client that I have is totally interested in solar. But I, I that day, it's not going to be a great day to push solar. You know, if I had like some information on the history of it so that I could just show her proof that there's normally a lot of sun in that area. If I had like an app or something, I could just pull it up real quick. That would be so convenient. Yeah, yeah well, we do, we do have that information available. So it's really a matter, matter of pulling it and uh, taking a look. So let's, let's look at the, uh, so this pulls up uh, once I uh, click uh, click the button here. These are the this is for 2020. Mm -hmm. I picked two parameters. We picked the cloud amount. So this is your fraction of clouds in your area. So this might be a good indication of when it's clear or not. Okay. Right. So you can see the cloud amounts are somewhere in the 50s to 60 percent, depending on the month. Mm -hmm. um, notice in Virginia Beach. November seems to stick out, at least for that particular year. Right. And then along with that is the estimate of the solar solar energy. The units that we use are mm -hmm. very compatible with the industry, but I don't know what your app is, is using there that you have. But we use kilowatt hours per meter squared per day. Is that mm -hmm. consistent? It's uh, kilowatt hours overall. Kilowatt, kilowatt hours? Generated so, by the panels. Okay. So we would have to just do a 20 multiply by 24, I think. So, um, but that would be one thing that we could, we could work on. You know, I'll, I'll give you this uh, spreadsheet. You could get this spreadsheet and then we can make sure that the units are consistent between your provider app and the data products that we're providing here. But regardless, you can see here. So, so just to give you a sense of how it changes, of course, in Virginia Beach, you have the minimum amount of solar irradiance in December, which isn't too surprising because that's when the uh, winter solstice is, the, this, the, uh, when the sun is uh, pointing down in, in the south, the southern hemisphere. So that's our winter. And so you can see January is also, and then by July, uh, that's your maximum. So we actually do have a maximum during our summer, but it's it's uh, in July when we have the maximum amount of solar irradiance. So you can see uh, that it's up almost to around seven kilowatt hours per meter squared per day. So, um, so that gives you the amount of energy that's available from the sunlight averaged over that month. And you can use that with your app. And essentially you could try to you, do some sort of fit where you compare your system output against the monthly system output against the irradiance estimates that we provide. And then that gives you a sort of a measure of how your system's responding to the clouds and the cloud system. So, um, so that would, so that, so that kind of shows you that that's the information I think that you probably would be most useful to you at this time. Yeah, so yeah, again, uh, so I wonder if we can put that into an app uh, that would just grab my GPS from the phone and and kind of just uh, make some standard graphs kind of like the app does for my solar panels. You know, we we do provide a way for users. I mean, we have not had a, the opportunity to uh, write an app like you're describing that would work really fast on the phone that would be really streamlined for homeowners. Um, but we have a service in power that might help someone that would be performing an app. So if I go back to our home page, uh, we have a full service uh, API. 
And um, the API, if, if you know of an app or if you're an app developer, know of an app developer, um, the API means that you can send a command, uh, for instance, a URL command. So this is a complete description of our API here. So you can send a, a command um, encoded with our language. You have a uh, API uh, as uh, I showed and and this API allows a user to uh, directly access the website and order the data that they need. And it could be very useful for a phone based app, for instance, as you suggested. So so I mentioned that this was some examples of the URL code used to um, used to go ahead and, and address the API and obtain the data products. And once you get the data, then they can generate convert any units and make any figures that you'd like to help you understand the performance of your system. And what I could have shown you uh, earlier is the fact that it, it, the first time that you use our data access viewer um, and you pick your uh, parameters mm -hmm. and then you submit your order. So let's just go ahead and, and submit the uh, order. So if I submit the order here, if you click the blue button, you get the output that I showed you before, uh, but this time I, uh, it's in ASCII. But if you cl click here, it says click here to access the URL. So if I go ahead and I copy the link location and then I open a new browser window, now you can see the URL command that was used to access the API and pull the data that you needed to assess your system. So you can see here it goes right to the website and uh, it pulls the all sky surface shortwave down the cloud amount. So you can use the uh, data access uh, viewer part of the website to understand how to use the API and then once you once you use the API here you go and you can see the um, you can go ahead and see here the data that you requested. Yeah that's really cool so even me as a non-programmer I could just take that URL and switch the years around and it would give me the new information for the new years. Yeah but, that's uh, right. You could, I, you still could, say, uh, I still wish somebody would make an app for it. <laughs> well, yeah, getting an app for that would be really wonderful. So that well, thank would be, you. be good. You're welcome. Appreciate nice to you. meet you. Thanks, Paul. I think you answered all of Rick's questions. Thank yeah. you so much. Looks like all there's right. many uses for that site. <laughs> yeah, we, we hope so. We, we hope it is useful, has a lot of information that that would hopefully help you address uh, questions, not only from your source power system, but from a realtor point of view. <laughs> nice to meet you both. Bye. Bring NASA's massive data sets to the masses. Take the You Are My Sunshine space app challenge and make a phone app to bring sunshine data to everyone.